In this video, I'm going to show you how to make those Future House stabby synth sounds that you hear a lot in Don Diablo's tracks. We're going to be using Citrus and it's going to sound like this. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. If you're new to the channel, I do do a lot of stock FL Studio sound design tutorials, as well as a bunch of other FL Studio and production related tutorials, so check that stuff out if you're interested. If you don't know, Citrus is a stock FL Studio plugin, it comes with all versions of FL Studio from the producer edition onward, so as long as you have at least the producer edition of FL Studio, you're going to be able to follow along with everything in this tutorial. I am going to be including this preset in the description of this video as a free download so be sure to check that and get that if you're interested however i really highly recommend that you watch this entire tutorial from start to finish because later on i am going to be getting into some more technical stuff that has to do with this preset that if you just download the preset you're not really going to understand how to fully utilize it so you're going to want to watch the video if you want to use the preset and with all that being said let's get straight into it All right, so I'm here inside FL Studio 20. I have Citrus loaded up and uh, I did create a little chord progression here, which you can pause the video now if you want to copy the chord progression so that you can follow along with the tutorial better, it's up to you. But anyway, once you've got that going on and you have your Citrus loaded up, the first thing that I wanna do is go up here to my plugin options. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna go down to presets and then we're gonna go to default. So this is just gonna give us a blank slate and it's gonna give us a sine wave, which should sound like this. Cool, so the first thing that I wanna do is where you see the sine wave, this wave shape here. Let's go ahead and right click and we're gonna to go to saw. So this is gonna give us a sawtooth wave, which is gonna sound like this. So the next thing that I wanna do is root this to a filter and we're gonna do that in my matrix. So let's go to our matrix and I'm gonna bring my out to the off position, which you can do by left clicking and then dragging it to the middle or shout out to Nick Park. He just showed me how to do this in the last tutorial that I did. You can click alt and then just left click and that'll go bring it to the off position automatically. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and bring it up all the way on filter one here and then we can bring our operator one up as well. So now we're gonna have a sawtooth wave but it's gonna be linked through our filter one. So it should sound like this. So it's kind of filtered out a little bit. So I'm gonna go into my filter one tab and I'm gonna to go to uh, where it says type here. This is our filter type. I'm gonna drag it down to LP, which is our low pass filter. And then I'm gonna bring this to Alt X3. So this particular filter type has a really aggressive high end when you bring the cutoff all the way up, which is what I wanna do. So I'm gonna bring the cutoff all the way up there and let's take a listen. So as you can hear, it's just really aggressive, which I really like for this sound. So for now, we'll just leave our cutoff all the way up. And next we're gonna link an LFO to this sound, which is actually what's going to give it that sort of stabby synth characteristic that we're going for here. So in Citrus, how we do this is we go into our LFO tab and make sure you're still in your filter. We're gonna be doing all this in our filter so that way when we add other operators on top, it's all going through the filter and it's all getting LFO'd the same way. First thing I wanna do is right click to get rid of all these points. So you can right click and get rid of all those. And then I can drag this all the way up and you can kind of see how the LFO looks here. So let's go ahead and click this to enable it. And then I'm gonna click this tempo button to link it to the tempo. And let's take a listen to what it sounds like now. And you can kind of see right here, this is the line. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this skew and we're gonna bring it all the way to the left, which is gonna give it more of a, a plucky like hit. Cool, so that's, that's a good sound. And it also kind of allows us to see where it's snapping to the grid. And if we turn on the metronome, we can hear. So I think that that is the right tempo. We may have to adjust this later, but I think it's good for now. So the next thing that I wanna do is go into my cutoff. So this is linked to the cutoff knob here, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get rid of all these points. And actually a faster way to do this would be to highlight this and then right click and just delete those points like that and then unhighlight that. And then you can bring this up. Let's turn it on, link it to the tempo, and then uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with the skew, and let's take a listen. 
So it looks like that was automatically set to the right LFO speed here. I think my LFO speed was actually adjusted to pretty much the right place automatically for me because I was already messing with this previously. So for you, if you're loading a brand new instance of Serum, you're probably going to have to uh, adjust it quite a bit to around this position here. So anyway, uh, next I want to kind of move this skew back a little bit. I don't want it quite that harsh of a hit. So somewhere in here, maybe like 75%. And that's on the cutoff. And then we're gonna do the same thing here on the volume. I'm gonna do like 69%. And you, you may wanna adjust this a little bit, play with it. I think maybe more like negative 60%. Yeah, negative 60% sounds pretty good. Okay, cool. So now we have our LFO going on. Uh, I wanna go ahead and add some effects on here. So I'm just gonna bring the effects up all the way. And then we can go into our effects tab. And by default, we have uh, a chorus effect, which sounds like this. So it's adding more voices and making it sound a lot wider. I'm gonna bring this down to three. Sounds pretty good. And then let's go ahead and turn on this reverb. And I'm just gonna bring the volume down to like 3%. So the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and go into my operator two, and we're going to leave this on a sine wave. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing this in and I'm going to bring it to about 75, 80%. Let's just go to 80%. And then I want to bring this up to six. So we're just trying to fill this sound out a little bit more. Let's go to my operator three. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring this up to about 75, 80%. We'll go 75% on this one, and I'm gonna bring the ratio down to one. And uh, I'm gonna leave this on the sine wave there for as well. So then let's go into my operator four, and I'm gonna bring this up about 50%, 52%. And then I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna make this a square wave. And then I'm gonna bring the ratio up to four. And then I wanna bring the noise here up to about 50%. So we're gonna add a little bit of white noise in it. Okay, cool. So now that's starting to sound a lot fuller and a little bit better. And keep in mind that chances are, even with how full I'm making this with the four different oscillators or operators, we're still gonna end up probably layering some other synths on top of this when you actually add this preset into your track. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So the next thing that I wanna do is add a portamento effect on this. And one thing that you'll notice if you listen closely to like Don Diablo's tracks, a lot of times he'll have this slide effect, which is a portamento effect. So if I go back into my main tab, there's actually a couple ways to do this in Citrus. One way would be to go into my settings here, and then you could just click this Porta button, which is the Portamento, and you can adjust it like that. Another way, which is the way I'm gonna do it, gives us a little bit more flexibility. And what I'm gonna do here is go to Porta here, click this, turn it on, and it doesn't just automatically turn the Portamento on, uh, it actually links it to operator one inside the pitch envelope. So we're in our pitch tab, we have to go to our envelope, we have to enable it, and then we have to turn the global on, so that makes it global, that makes this particular operator work with all the operators, it works on the whole synth. That's what global means. And then, once again, I'm gonna delete all these points, and I'm gonna bring this point up to zero, and then I'm going to make another point here. Let's right click this point, and we'll make that a decay point has to be a decay point for this to work. And now let's take a listen. So now you can hear that portamento effect going on there. So actually that length sounds pretty good. If we drag this farther out, it, it's a longer. Or we could do shorter. But I kind of liked that length where I was at. I don't know exactly where it was. So that's pretty good. Now, but the problem with this is that we're having it on every single one, and I actually don't want this on every single one. So now I'm gonna get into some automation and some stuff that you can do to make this even more unique and switch it up a little bit. And for me, this is where Citrus gets a little bit more frustrating because it's just, it's not quite as like simple as plugins like Serum, various other synths that are really designed to be user-friendly and be able to automate things very quickly and easily. For example, if we go back into our LFO, you can see how on the speed, we don't have like a 1 32nd or a 1 16th like we do in Serum, which to me is a little bit frustrating because when you're automating, it, it makes things uh, kind of difficult. And please correct me if I'm wrong here. If there is sort of an easier way to snap it 
to like a 1 16th or a 1 32nd or a 1 8th within Citrus, please let me know in the comments. But anyway, getting back on track, if we go back into our main tab, I can actually automate the portamento effect by right clicking this, creating an automation clip. And that's what I've done here. So in my playlist, I actually did that here. <laughs> So you can hear that in effect where it's only sliding up on this one here instead of every time because I don't want that portamento on that first hit. So, I mean, it's fairly easy to automate that. Now where things get tricky, uh, what I was talking about with the LFO is this automation clip here. And I mean, I spent quite some time having to figure out like the exact right LFO speed on the automation here. And again, if somebody knows a quicker, easier way to do this where you don't have to like manually do it, please let me know because I'm I'm curious. But essentially what I did here was I, I automated the LFO speed of both the filter cutoff and the volume, how we did uh, in Citrus here. And I created this. So if I go back into my Citrus, uh, you can do that by going into your filter tab. We're in our LFO and I'm basically automating the speed knob here. So I'm right clicking, going to create automation clip. And I did that for the volume LFO and for the cutoff LFO here. So they're both doing the exact same thing. So that's really everything I wanted to go over as far as this preset, how you can automate it. Obviously you can automate any of the parameters that we sort of tweaked and you can kind of tweak this to make it your own. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I'd recommend, you know, doing some layering. So for example, I layered this other synth on it. Just to get those initial stabs sounding even stabbier. And then, uh, of course, I added some other, other synths on here as well. Then I did some side chaining and I added all these drums and we get this. Now the last thing that I want to mention here before I wrap up the tutorial is just that if we go into our filter section, we can mess with the cutoff and kind of change the sound a little bit. In this tutorial, I've gone for a very aggressive saw based sound, but a lot of times we'll hear more of sort of like a brass sound and we can achieve that by messing with the cutoff. So let's take a listen. Let's bring the cutoff to about 50%. So you can kind of hear what I'm talking about there and then we can we can adjust it in between to change the sound a little bit. And then obviously if we want a stab that's a little bit slower, we can go back into our LFO and adjust the speed here. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification that's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.